Hello, everyone. Welcome to day four of CIE. We just finished our Rev Revive Me Jet panel on this channel, and we are now running a double feature with a game development panel over here with Sprung Studios. Uh, later, we will be getting into our League of Legends third place and finals. But for now, I am happy to introduce the Sprung Studios, who will be talking about user research, motion design, UX, UI design, and production and games. Denitza will be your host, so Denitza, take it away. Yeah, so hello everyone. Um, I'm Denisa. I'm a senior user researcher here at Sprung, and I'm going to be our host for today. Um, and before we begin, I just do want to give a huge shout out to the CIE team, namely Jennifer and Kristen, for being really amazing points of contact as we've been organizing this panel. And then I also want to shout out off screen Brian, who was instrumental in really assembling our team of panelists. So we're really excited uh, to talk about our careers in gaming and the things that we do here at Strong. Um, so but let's first start off with some introductions. So everyone, please uh, start with your name. Tell us what your role is at Strong and how long you've been here. And if you want to share what your favorite game is, uh, I'll pass it off to Rebecca to go first. Hi, I'm Rebecca. I'm a senior UX UI designer here at Sprung. I've been here for a little over four years now. Um, and my favorite game at the moment is Horizon Zero Dawn. Nice. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, hi, I'm Hannah. I'm a user researcher here at Sprung. I've been here for around a year. Um, and uh, my favorite game at the moment is Chance of Sinar. Ooh, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Hi, I'm Amelia. I'm a senior producer here at Sprung. I've been here for nearly five years. And uh, my favorite game is Final Fantasy Tactics Advance. Class. <laughs> hey everyone, my name is Justin. Uh, I'm an associate user researcher here at Sprung. Uh, also been here for about a year. Uh, and my current favorite game is Team Fight Tactics. Hi, I'm Adam. I'm a motion designer at Sprung Studios. And uh, I've been here for nearly two years. And my favorite game is Bloodborne. Awesome. Let go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we have a wide range of roles here on our panel. And so to kind of kick things off, uh, I wanted to give an opportunity for everyone to learn a little bit more about like what it is that you do. So starting with Rebecca, so you are a senior UX UI designer. Can you tell us about what that role will tell? Yeah. Um, so basically, I work with a producer like Amelia to break down the feature requests that we get from clients. Um, and then I get to do a bunch of research. I get to do wireframes and interactive prototypes and just really like integrate with client teams to better understand their goals and features that they want to they want us to work on. Um, and also as a lead, I get to mentor other designers, which I find really rewarding. Nice. And so part of your role is like both the UX and the UI. Can you tell us a bit about like what the difference is? <laughs> Yeah, so use, UX is user experience and UI is user interface, but those terms don't really mean much when you're not in the industry or you don't really know what that is. Um, so I like to use analogies to kind of break that down into simpler terms. Um, and one of our coworkers, Austin, had a really good one where he likened it to a doorknob. Mm -hmm. um, and UX is how the doorknob works and UI is how it looks. Um, but in terms of game design, we can break that down even further and say that it's not just the doorknob, it's the door, it's the wall that the door is on. So think of the screen as the wall and the door is a segment or a section of that mm -hmm. screen and a doorknob is an element that's on that screen. And then UX would be, you know, how are you approaching the door? Are you coming at it from the front? Are you coming at it from the side? It kind of brings into focus some of the navigation that we work with mm -hmm. um, and those types of UX questions. And then also like, how does the doorknob work? Does it is it something that you turn to open? Is it like a latch? Is it locked? Can you tell just by looking at it that it's locked? How does the lock function? Um, all those types of things. And then the UI on top of that would be, what is it made of? Is the door wood? Is it metal? Like, how does it look visually? Is there a hierarchy that all of these elements bring together to have a hmm. cohesive design? And so that's kind of like how the UX and UI works. Nice. And speaking of UX, we have quite a few user researchers here on our panel, including Justin, Hannah, and myself. And kind of just like what you were saying, Rebecca, like our job is to really figure out like maybe sometimes where things go wrong with the door. <laughs> so like what are some barriers and friction points that players might encounter in a game? Like do they understand what they're supposed to be doing? How do they actually uh, approach trying to figure out what they need to do? And what are ways that we can 
work collaboratively with our developers and our other teams to actually figure out how to make games more approachable and accessible to a variety of audiences. Um, Hannah is actually in one of the rare positions to get to talk about her game because her work is already out there in the public domain. So oh, yeah. Hannah, can you <laughs> tell us a bit about your role as a user researcher working with the CPUs? Yeah, so um, I am in a very uh, rare position <laughs> of being able to uh, talk about my involvement with Sea of Thieves. Um, so Sprung has been partnered with Sea of Thieves for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, the game studio is called Rare. Um, but <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, yeah, I get to regularly meet with them. So. Um, a little bit of the work that I do is kind of uh, with the designers that we have internally, as well as some of the um, kind of game designers and leadership uh, that they have there over at Rare. Um, they're over in Brighton in the UK, and so a lot of my mornings are uh, filled up with meetings at their end of day and things like that. But uh, it's really exciting because we get to kind of work in a, in a global team and have people like overseas talking about certain game features, and then we bring them into our in-person lab here in Vancouver and have recruitment and participants locally come in and test out the games mm -hmm. and whether or not those questions are coming up from uh, our internal designers or from Rare themselves, uh, we're able to kind of bring those findings and answers to the team and make the game better overall. Yeah, thanks. Really exciting and mm -hmm. I'm glad that you get to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Justin is another one of our user researcher on the panel. And Justin, you have an interesting story because you actually came to user research from like the finance industry where you did user research here, but now you're in games. So like, how has that been like for you? <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know if it's a, but it's a rare experience. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I, I love it. Like, I think for myself, like, I really love being able to work in UX, like just really like the human aspect of it. You're okay. improving experiences. It's a very like, like exciting uh, industry I think to be in, um, and I think there's really like nothing that compares to being able to work in the games industry. When you're a gamer, you like spend all of your time outside of work playing games, um, and so I think that transition was really uh, I think a fun transition for me. Um, you know, working in finance, you're working on like maybe some banking apps or banking mm -hmm. websites, and that's fun to also know that you're helping maybe uh, with like the financial literacy of things. Um, I don't know. Yeah, working in games is like easy. I, for me, you can't beat it. <laughs> <laughs> I think we would all agree that like yeah, it's one of the things that we love about our roles here. Mm -hmm. um, so we also have Adam on our panel, and Adam is a motion designer. So Adam, can you tell us a bit about like what you do? Like, what is your role in games as a motion designer? Sure. Um, basically, what it is is I uh, bring movement and animation to mm -hmm. the static screens that are developed by the designers. Um, and that kind of covers both UX and UI. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like motion play is like a pretty key role, it's like bringing like the life to the game, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, like, what are some other reasons like why you think like motion is like really critical? Well, like you said, like it brings it to life. And, you know, sometimes you're not able to understand or see how a UI functions until you mm -hmm. see it move. Like, mm -hmm. You can see a screen with the door closed and then a screen with the door open, but you can't necessarily visualize how it gets there. Mm -hmm. And so that's where motion comes in because you can understand things a lot more clearly when you see it all together. Yeah. Yeah. And last but not least, we have Amelia. And Amelia is, I would consider her role like being being the one that really corrals all the teams together and makes oh, yeah. sure that everything happens. So Amelia, you are a producer. So can you talk to us about like what your role as a senior producer looks like and what production games it? Yeah, so producer is a title that can mean a lot of different things yeah. depending on the studio. But the thing that we have in common across all of the projects and studios that we're at is that we are planners and coordinators. Uh, so we are spending time gathering requirements, looking at everything that needs to be done, putting it into lists and prioritizing it and working out who needs to be working on what thing mm -hmm. and where and why. Uh, and then trying to look for any places where there might be a mismatch between teams that are working on similar things and trying to bridge those gaps or find solutions to problems ideally before they occur, but uh, definitely as and after they're occurring, if, they, if that's what it comes down to. Yeah. 
And I know for you, you actually worked in the oil industry before you became like a producer here. So like, what has that been like for you? Yeah, so um, I was a, I'm a mechanical engineer by, uh, by education. That was what I got my bachelor's degree in. And uh, I started out working in standards and compliance in oil. And uh, I decided to move to games just because I've loved video games all my life. And so was one day somebody just kind of said to me, like, if you love games so much, why don't you work in it? And I'm like, oh, I didn't know I could. I didn't know that was an option. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and but there's actually been a lot of skills that I developed uh, in engineering that have been very directly applicable. Like, uh, obviously, things aren't quite as life or death in games as they can be when you're dealing with like large manufacturing and shipping um, problems. But uh, risk assessment is something that is industry wide. Project management is something that is industry wide. And uh, the skills that I learned uh, in oil in those areas are directly applicable whether it's uh, I'm looking at underground pipes or if I'm looking at uh, implementation from mm -hmm. of a of an interface in a game. Yeah, totally. Yeah, and without our producers, we would all be like wildcats. Well, <laughs> 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 a lot of a lot of exactly. things. Um, yeah. So we kind of have learned a little bit about what everyone does, um, but now we want to dive a little bit into some more fun stuff to kind of figure out like what really brought you all into the game and what your careers in gaming have taught you. So starting off, um, like let's go back maybe to Rebecca because we haven't heard from you just in a little bit. So like <laughs> what got you started in the gaming industry? How like did you become like motivated to do this career path? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, like probably everyone else on the panel here, like I've always loved games. Like mm -hmm. I played games since I was maybe five in my parents' basement, just our original Nintendo playing the game <laughs> cool and Ice Climbers and Zelda. And as the games got better, I got more and more interested in pursuing that as a career um, because like things just, the graphics got so much better and the types of games that were coming out were so interesting. Um, and I think the industry has just continued to climb in that regard. Um, so I got my first job working at like EB Games, which is a place that <laughs> sells video games. And uh, that was just like the foot in the door of like, yeah, foot in the door or nail in the coffin. <laughs> <laughs> this is it for me. That's what I want to do. But it was actually really like, convoluted way of getting into the industry because I went to school for 3D modeling for animation and games hmm. but I didn't really like 3D modeling so much but I finished out the program and I was like oh, that wasn't really what I wanted to do so I kind of I went into graphic design and I designed for print and then I did web design and web design is where I was like first introduced to the concept of UX and that was like that kind of niche area that I felt really comfortable and confident in and that was the area where I ended up being like yeah, this for games, definitely. Mm -hmm. Like, it wasn't really a thing when I first went to school, though. Um, it was in its infancy at that point. Um, but now it's just, it's exploded into this huge thing. We have this whole company here in Vancouver that just does UX UI. And I was like, there, that's the place. And I got my first job here. And yeah, I've been in love with it ever since. And like, what about you, Alex? So like, why did you decide to pursue a career in motion design and gaming and stuff like that? I mean, yeah, like, like Rebecca said, like, I think a lot of us will have the same experience of just, like, we grew up with games, we love mm -hmm. games. How awesome would it be if we could do that for a job? Yeah. Um, you know, I'm from Perth, which is not the biggest city in uh, Australia, so mm -hmm. there's not a whole lot going on there. So I've basically, like, for years just been uh, an animator for explainer animation, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, gets tiring after a little while. <laughs> um, so I packed up my stuff and came to where the action is. Um, and yeah, got lucky enough to get in here. And the thing about Vancouver is there's like so much opportunity here. Because okay. there's everything here. Yeah. yeah. Totally. So it's definitely the right place for it. Yeah. So that kind of brings me to like my next question. So we've all talked about kind of like how like what motivated us to get into games, but like how did we actually do it right so like uh amelia for you like how important do you think things were like in terms of like building networks and building connections for actually breaking into this career path yeah uh hugely important um there's a little bit of an irony in me saying that because i ended up getting this job by randomly seeing a job application <laughs> i didn't know anybody here and i just like 
sent off my resume and cover letter, always include a cover letter. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and I like nailed an interview and, and I got lucky in that regard. Um, so there wasn't really any networking that helped me there, but where the networking really helped me was all of the preparation building mm. up to that moment. Oh. The reason that I had a good uh, resume and a cover letter is that I had made connections in the industry to, uh, uh, I don't know what that means. <laughs> uh, that would really, um, they they looked over my application and they gave me advice on how to how to mm. do things. So what I did is because like I was originally also in Australia. I'm from Melbourne, um, and then I moved to Vancouver of about five years ago. Um, is I immediately started attending um, game dev events, mm. uh, and I went and attended panels. I went and attended community events, indie events. If there were talks being done by um, game developers in the area, I'd attend and try and talk to the devs afterwards, and just sort of get a feel for like what was happening in the industry. And that really paid off, and even now is still paying off because as much as I get mentorship. Uh, career-wise from within my studio. Um, there's also so much wisdom and learning to be had mm -hmm. from your peers in the industry as well. Um, so it's not just about getting a job, it's really about forming a community that you can yeah. all lean on and, and provide value to each other. Yeah, so for like our maybe like early career folks that are tuning in, like is there anywhere that you'd recommend as far as like getting started on that path? Um, it really depends on where you're, where you're at. Um, there's lots of online communities. Um, I think that the single biggest bang for buck in terms of trying to break into dev and starting your networking is attending um, a game jam. Uh, Global game jam happens in January every year um, and attending my first game jam was um, an incredible moment, not just because it was hugely fun, really tiring, but also you mm -hmm. got to see the development process happened with everybody else and if you saw something that was interesting you could just walk up and just be like oh hey what's going on there can you talk to yeah. me about it um and from there you just start meeting people and if you maybe attend something else later on you might recognize a couple of faces and be like oh hey remember me mm -hmm. i remember you let's have a chat how's your project going all that sort of thing and i think they're the best kickoff points yeah nice and so someone who can maybe speak a little bit about maybe using some of those skills is Justin, because Justin, you got hired fairly recently, so you brought him through this. I also got hired with Justin. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but is there any advice that you give people, like specifically looking uh, to break into like a career in gaming? Like what are things that you did when you were transitioning from like finance to gaming, for example? Yeah, that's a great question. Like I would say before, um, working at Scrum, like I didn't have any like professional working experience. Like this is my first time working in a real job in the games <laughs> industry. Um, but I think luckily, like during my undergrad in university, I had taken some game design courses, so I was mm -hmm. able to like leverage that a little bit, speak to about like how games are designed, and like be able to communicate my basic understanding of like what makes a game fun. Um, and I think even though I didn't have any research experience doing uh, or doing research on games, um, being able to say a little bit about like you know, uh, I can speak to a game. I know like yeah. what gets people motivated and like what can be um, what like, kind of goes into making a game. So I think that was one way that I was able to leverage some of my experience. Um, and then, yeah, just like kind of looking online to like uh, Emilio saying, like looking at some of the communities, um, what are other like researchers or job seekers like doing in the games industry? Yeah. Um, I know I leverage like LinkedIn quite a bit and that's actually like how I found this job position or job posting. Um, and so that was like, uh, I guess, my way in uh, into this role and into, into gaming. Yeah, totally. Um, so like, what about you, Adam? Do you think that there's any like particular skill that really helps someone thrive like in this industry? Yeah, I think um, being versatile and mm -hmm. flexible and accepting or being open to change and constantly refreshing your skills, developing new skills. Um, you know, sometimes the industry changes and what you learned anymore isn't as relevant. So you have to yeah. learn a new software, um, but still like taking with you the experience and knowledge that you previously gained. And I also strongly believe that you need to be able to accept feedback and criticism mm. because these kinds of things is how collaboration starts. You know, I think that like one of the strongest parts of Sprung is the fact that we can all like collaborate on things together. And that's how yeah. you like get a really solid thing going. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're definitely like in a unique position where we all get to like learn from each other in like very like different ways because we are so involved in like very different processes, but still working cohesively towards like a common goal, which is really nice. I can definitely uh, relate to that idea of like trying to be like adaptable and flexible and stuff mm -hmm. like that too, because like kind of similar to Justin's with like my first gaming role as well, and I found like the best skill that I have found to be really useful is just being able to use like kind of like global like transferable knowledge and skills so being able to like even if you don't know how to tackle one problem in a particular way being able to sort of like adapt and be like well i've worked on this other thing that might be applicable to this new challenge and so just really kind of being open to trying to find creative solutions for problems i think has been like the biggest thing that's helped me personally too um so i know like all of us at some capacity consume game content are avid gamers so one of like the big questions i have is like well how do you approach really balancing that passion that we have for gaming and also the career demands so amelia what about you how do you <laughs> <laughs> my answer is um I don't really balance it, and I kind of just let gaming wash through my life uh, in most aspects. Um, to me, like, having some kind of work-life balance is the most yeah. important yeah. thing, but, like, I loved games coming into this job, and I, it was really important to me that, like, I still play games and still love games, uh, come, like, while I'm working here. So mm -hmm. um, I spend my time outside of work. Like, I'll, I will have my regular games that I go back to, Final Fantasy XIV. Um, <laughs> and then, like, I'll play a collection of the latest releases and uh, and older games uh, mm -hmm. we recommended to. I listen to podcasts both about making games and just about people reviewing and talking about games because I can't play everything or yeah. more specifically like I don't want to play everything um there's a lot of amazing games that come out and I can learn a lot that is applicable to work just by listening to like some folks talk about mm -hmm. it for half an hour um and then I don't even have to play it or I'll go like oh uh that might actually be relevant to a work project I'm gonna mm -hmm. bring up with the team that hey this game came out that like might be relevant to us um but you do need to spend some time not uh, not doing the gaming professional and gaming personal thing. So uh, I think it's really good to have other avenues where you're uh, either just building up skills or mm -hmm. you're um, just kind of living an interesting and varied life. I play ice hockey and I love it so much. And mm -hmm. uh, it's weird to say that things that come up in ice hockey are relevant to my career, but like, anything that's a soft skill is going to be transferable mm -hmm. between any hobby that you do and your work so uh just do things and live a rich life <laughs> yeah, definitely. and that kind of uh something you said there about like you know you may not be able to like consume all the content yourself but it is still really important to like uh actually keep up with like what the current trends are mm -hmm. kind of going back to something that adam said earlier mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, I'm kind of curious now. So like we talked a lot about kind of generally like how we like operate like in our professional careers and all that kind of stuff. But I kind of want to flip it a little bit and talk a little bit more uh, locally about what things are like at Sprung. Um, so like kind of like what does the day to day look like for you at Sprung? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, you know, one great thing about Sprung is that they have this uh, no crunch policy, which is great. I know that the Love gaming that. industry <laughs> does kind of, it, it kind of fluctuates with that. But um, here at Sprung, we have a hybrid schedule as well. So we're able to kind of balance a little bit of work from home and work in office. And so we get to see our lovely coworkers as well as have a little bit of time on our own. And our office itself is located in downtown Vancouver and it's absolutely gorgeous. We look over at the mountains and all 360 yeah. <laughs> uh, views. Like one of the, these meeting rooms that we're in right now is uh, really, really bright and it's really nice. And so we are able to like hang out with everybody. So coming in on the days that I do come in, get in in the morning, sit down on my desk, kind of check my Slack, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, most of what I do day to day kind of centers around the research questions that I'm trying to answer mm -hmm. for the client work that I'm doing. So uh, normally, uh, let's say it's a usability test day, uh, we might have participants coming in. And so that day is kind of stacked with people um, coming in that have been recruited by our lovely participant coordinator. Um, mm -hmm. And I have uh, a lovely team of researchers behind me able to also 
help out with the kind of operations of a test day. And so players will come in, they'll play a certain portion of a game, uh, we'll observe, we'll uh, kind of take those findings away, analyze the data, and then uh, report back to the developers. And um, a lot of times we don't actually, you know, see what get implemented in mm -hmm. some cases, but a uh, nice thing about having a lot of the internal team and designers and engineers on that team is that we do get to see some of those um, design insights implemented into the games that we're working on. So it's really, really nice. It kind of brings it all full circle. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, and kind of on that note, like, so we haven't heard a little bit from uh, Adam in a little bit. So like, what has been kind of the most rewarding aspect of working? Here. Um, been here for a bit? <laughs> no, totally yeah. Uh, yeah, basically everything has, you know, it's great to see stuff that you worked on personally, yeah. changes that you brought about, decisions you made, um, implemented in a game, mm -hmm. like feels tangible mm -hmm. yeah. um, in, in something that you really love and care about. So mm -hmm. it's nice to be able to put your name on that. Yeah. Yeah, and what about you, Rebecca? Because like you also get to have a hands-on approach to like some of the designs. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I think one of the most rewarding aspects for me at Sprung and just in co-development in particular is that I get to work on so many different games. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not, I get bored really easily at work. But, like, <laughs> I don't have to work on the same thing for like five, six years in a row. I get to like bounce around and like work with a ton of different teams and different clients, and it's just like it's so great to get to work on so many different kinds of things. Like mm -hmm. I can work on mobile, I can do AAA, I can do console, PC, like I get to work with all these like different teams and I learn something from each and every client team that I work with. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm constantly learning, I'm constantly doing new things and it's just like, it's so much more valuable to me to be able to have those experiences. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and for you, like Amelia, like what has been like your experience like as a producer getting involved in this? I mean, yeah, similar to what Rebecca said, um, as a producer, I get to be on multiple projects at the same mm -hmm. time, which uh, most folks here are just sort of on one thing at a time. So I've been on 22 projects now across wow. five years of Scrum. <laughs> um, and it, not to brag. Not to brag, but yeah. I get to actually be one of those like impossible resumes where they're like, I've <laughs> worked on like 15 games in one year. Um, I'm like, oh, kind of. <laughs> uh, but, uh, it's the variety then that really is sort of the spice of life there um, and getting to work with all of the different disciplines. I mean, Sprung is sort of like it was originated as a UX UI design firm um, mm -hmm. and now we do all kinds of things that sort of are interrelated. Um, so I get to work with not just UX UI designers, I get to work with motion designers, engineers, I get to work with um, UXR, I get to work with technical artists. And then of course, there's all of the teams on the client side that we work mm -hmm. with. Um, some of the little bit of work I can talk about is like, I've worked on multiple Call of Duty games that have come out. So mm -hmm. a couple of different Activision subsidiary studios there. I've also worked on some indie games um, where, so like on one hand, you're dealing with a game that is being worked on by like a thousand people. And on the other side, maybe a game that's been worked on by 10. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're all very different experiences. They all have very different challenges. Um, and that's really sort of like, I'll never get bored from that as well. So that's really what's rewarding. Yeah. So like, actually kind of on that note, like, you know, we've talked a little bit about some of the things that have been like really rewarding, but like, you know, we do sometimes like face challenges and the, the work that we do, we have to be, we have to improvise, adapt, overcome <laughs> sometimes very quickly. Um, and so I'm kind of curious, like, how do you approach uh, dealing with some like challenges? Who's that for? Well, I mean, like, uh, like everyone said, like, as an associate, I think it's really great for me to be able to rely on some of like, my senior members of the team um, to be able to ask them questions uh, and like really get into like what, how they might have solved the problem that I might be facing. Um, yeah, I think like the team culture as well, I like, guess, just really supportive. Like, I think on the UXR team, we have around 10, 11 people. Um, so there's tons of different backgrounds and experiences and knowledge levels um, and for me as an associate it's always really great to be able to learn something new like I feel like every day I come into work and there's something new whether it's related to my job or maybe related to the industry or uh, something else there's just tons of tons of information to absorb here and I think that's what one of the things that I really appreciate about working at Sprung um, is it's 
Yeah, always learning. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, and so, yeah, I, I think I can definitely relate to that as well, because I think, yeah, like, you know, we, we the three of us, <laughs> all got hired together, and, like, for, uh, similar to Justin, this was, like, my first kind of really pivot into the gaming industry, and so there was a lot of things that, like, I didn't know, even though I had, like, a lot of, like, I think transferable skills from doing, like, research outside of this, so, yeah, it's definitely been really nice to know that I can lean on my teammates and also be able to, like, lean on other people in the studio who have had years of experience and worked on 20 two plus games <laughs> um great so i think one of the other things like when we're thinking about kind of breaking in again to like the industry and the field is thinking about like what skills and qualities are really important and justin you really touch on some of the things that i think that we value as a team which is like that collaborative component and that like willingness to like learn with and from each other mm -hmm. um hannah can you speak a little bit more about like skills or qualities that you think are really valuable yeah sure i can speak to like specifically uh, my role as a user researcher as well, and then kind of more generally how we feel uh, at Sprung. But um, I, <laughs> uh, I, I came from academia, so uh, my research skills are, uh, kind of stem from that, kind of at the baseline of my foundation of research is kind of academic research, specifically in human computer interaction, but you don't necessarily need any of those skills, like any of that background to become a user researcher. Mm -hmm. While it does, you know, kind of put you in practice and things like that, um, you do end up you know, uh, being able to learn those skills in different contexts, depending on where you're coming from. So I do think a lot of the things that we really value is like critical thinking, question asking, mm -hmm. things that are like very uh, reflective on your own um, abilities to look at a research question, scope that question, and kind of develop out a roadmap for uh, a research deliverable that will be, you know, at least somewhat <laughs> answering the question that the developers had. Sometimes they have this huge grandiose question that you have to kind of piece out into these different pillars of like, how do we answer this portion of that question, this portion yeah. of that question, this portion of that question. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times what you're doing and what we look for at Sprung is something along the lines of, do you have that ability to kind of like think about problems yeah. in that way? Um, and I think that that, while it is really valuable as a researcher, it does kind of branch over into the other disciplines as well, um, quite a bit. Yeah, and like, what kind of advice, uh, I'm just going to kind of like leave this open so that way I don't like pinpoint call people. <laughs> <laughs> but what kind of advice uh, would y'all give for someone who is trying to kind of sell that they have like those skills, mm -hmm. like that ability to apply what they mm -hmm. know in one domain to like the games industry? Like, how would you kind of? tell people like this is how you can kind of sell it yeah you can do this here um i can i can jump in really yeah. quickly i think uh just for both research and design maybe uh you can also speak to design work too <laughs> um a lot of times what we look for is things like case studies mm -hmm. um Definitely. have you thought about this space before like it, if you don't have the work experience that's okay but it's also like whether or not you're applying that into the context that you're trying to get a job in as well mm -hmm. um so like the passion for games is there you probably thought about games for a long time um and let's see your critical thinking about it yeah exactly design mm -hmm. is the same thing like if you if you play games you've probably played a game where you're not a big fan of the user experience <laughs> <laughs> and you're like i could do this i could fix this so like in your portfolio make something fixing a ux problem and show the critical thinking and the steps that you would take to fix a problem that like directly affected you as a gamer um, because that's like that's exactly what we do every day mm -hmm. like and that's so valuable to show that you have that type of ux thinking um and then over top of that like fix the ui too while you're at it like <laughs> <laughs> some things are just not very pretty you, too, you know yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or it can be a challenge to yourself like if you are a ui aspiring ui artist to like try and match a mm -hmm. given style yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm practice yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah what are some things that so that you did justin like when you were trying to do that going from finance i think like what uh, rebecca was saying like really resonated like you play a game and you maybe you really love the gameplay but you're like oh man like i hate setting like sending a friend request mm -hmm. to my friend like, I, I have a mess like oh i don't know what this is but <laughs> i hate league's messaging system i can never save my chat history i always forget what i'm typing to my friends um and so i think for myself like if i was to 
you know, be in a position where I'm looking to kind of get my foot into the door in the mm-hmm. engagement industry, that might be a problem that I try to tackle. And like, mm-hmm. maybe I'll uh, message my friends, be like, hey, can I interview you guys real quick, 30 minutes to be mm-hmm. like, yeah. um, what do you think about the chat? What is your experience like? Mm-hmm. Um, maybe they really love it. And so that would be like a really interesting opportunity for me, I think, to be able to see like, what are people's different opinions, um, mm-hmm. and then be able to translate that into like, uh, some kind of project experience even though it's not a you know, client experience even though it's mm-hmm. not work experience it is still something that shows um my critical thinking like hannah was saying and how i tackle problems mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. kind of like doing like mini case studies like yeah. i know for me like that was like very helpful too i did something very similar where i like didn't come from a games background but i had like an academic research background similar mm-hmm. to Anna again but like uh yeah so i just started like looking at like different game screens and figuring out okay like what are potential issues that like players could encounter or, like when i was playing a game like how did I know that I needed to click on this feature? So just doing kind of like that to sort of give yourself like an edge when you're on the job market to be like, yeah, see, this is how I can apply these skills to the setting, even though I don't have that kind of experience. Mm-hmm. 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 Um, kind of on that note, so thinking back to like where you were, like maybe like five, like 10, 15 years ago, some of us are not that old. <laughs> like I would be adjusted like a baby. <laughs> like, hey, <laughs> but like what? advice would you give yourself like adam what about you um yeah look big and how many years ago um just uh immerse yourself in as many games as possible um you know especially for ux you know, we play games, we are users, mm-hmm. we know what works. When you play a game, you can tell immediately if it feels clunky or bad. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the more that you immerse yourself, the, the more knowledge you'll have about it. What about you, Amelia, as our other residential Australian? <laughs> 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 yeah, I suppose, like, uh, if, we're, if we're talking, like, five maybe a little more years ago than that for me the big shift was um like there's more to game development than uh than just being like a game designer or a programmer Mm -hmm. or an artist like when even though i loved games so much and i tried to learn a lot about the making of them these were the roles that sort of only got surfaced was like oh you either you're an artist and you're doing concepts or you're a 3d modeler or you're a game designer or you're a programmer and yep that's it that's everybody Mm -hmm. in games um but the reality is to like put a game together is yeah like you like depending on the size of your team you'll dro- add and drop roles as, as you need but like user experience design wasn't something i'd ever heard of um user uh user research wasn't something that i was aware of production wasn't something that i was aware mm-hmm. of i knew what project management was but i didn't know that there was a different term for it or even a role for it in the games industry uh never mind that when you get into like that there's technical artists there's like solid surface artists there's 3d artists 2d artists um there's a million different types of engineers um Mm -hmm. and that's mostly looking at engine stuff there's audio designers um there's you can just keep rattling them off and I'm I'm barely scraping the surface. How many designers can we (laughs) but also like um for example marketing like uh there's there's a huge amount of um work to be done in marketing games and that's game development too like you can't a game can't concede unless people know about it and you they need to be involved in the process so that they're aware of like what audience is being developed um you need people that are like making sure that the business itself runs <laughs> uh like you need someone looking after payroll this is yeah. all contributing to like the big picture of it and mm-hmm. it's like seven eight years ago i guess i just didn't really think about it in that term and so like mm-hmm. if you want to be involved in games you've probably got a skill set that you mm-hmm. can apply to games um because i the whole time like I, all through university i was like man game game design is cool wish i could do that <laughs> <laughs> game development's great wow wish that- 
Wish that was me. <laughs> but I don't know. That was, yeah. Don't know, don't know how you do that. I guess you just have to be like randomly selected. Like somebody turns up at your it's door. Lot. And, and yeah. then it's like, congratulations. You are being welcomed into the games industry. Um, no, like you, like it is a tough industry to break into. But like there's so much more possibility out there than just game design. Just mm-hmm. environment design, level design, all that sort of thing. So uh, I think the advice I would have given myself is like, Go and learn more about it. Broaden your horizons a little bit. Mm-hmm. Go and talk to some people, and also like go and look for the roles that like. Just go and check out like a huge maybe like Activision Blizzard or something, and take a look at their careers page, mm-hmm. and just see all of the different categories and job titles, and take a read through them and mm-hmm. see for yourself like, hey, maybe there is something in here that I am uniquely fitted for that maybe nobody else could because of what I'm interested in and what my experience is. Um, Cause like, I don't regret doing like uh, mechanical engineering. If anything, I wouldn't have changed a thing about my studies or my work experience up mm-hmm. until this point. I've taken something from everything I've done up until this point and applied it here. Yeah. Um, but sometimes you're like, I've got all this stuff and I know what I can offer, but I don't know what people need. Mm-hmm. Put them the work, go find out. Yeah. Yeah. Before I found this job, I didn't know that emotion design for games was something I could be. Yeah. You know, I I knew motion graphics, but I was like, okay, well, I guess I'm going to be doing that for explaining emotions. I'm not going to do that for games. <laughs> yeah, I felt the same thing. Like, I was very much like, uh, this is my hobby. Yeah. <laughs> and this is what I do. Yeah. <laughs> and then I didn't realize, like, the passion that I have for my hobby can also be, like, merged with what I do. Mm-hmm. The what I do part wasn't the part that I really, I would always, like, separate it out for some reason. It was like, that. I'm focused on that thing. Mm-hmm. That's my career. But, like, for, like, user research in games, I was, like, mm-hmm. focused in academ- academics and research and things like that and would just, like, game on the side to, like, relieve stress or, like, yeah. you know, chill out or something like that. But, like, realistically, I didn't know that those two things were together in the world in some mm-hmm. context until I was like actually like video game research <laughs> and, then, like, and then I realized <laughs> <laughs> I <didn't hate> this. <laughs> like there it is that's the exact job that I want so it's like it's interesting because um I think that you think you're making up jobs in your head but like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah yeah so I think that that's also a, like a really good point of like years ago I would have just tried to google more stuff about what I actually want to do like where my passions align and like how I can then better be motivated to kind of seek that out mm-hmm. as well but again I also don't regret focusing on what I focused on mm-hmm. as well <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah um I think for me because I came from like a long academic background so I did a PhD which was like like a long long too many years long. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. do I regret it <laughs> no, I'm but I, yes, I can be like, yes, I'm a doctor, but not the kind that can help you in a state of emergency. Um, but yeah, I think for, I think kind of like what everyone was saying, it's like you learn a lot of like transferable skills, which are going to always be really helpful. Like no kind of experience that you've had is bad experience. I think it all kind of helps shape you and helps inform your future abilities to do what will make you happy. But I think for myself, I would have done something similar where I would have looked at other careers a lot earlier rather than just kind of like fixating on just like a kind of like a few career paths that in the end I realized wouldn't make me happy. So but now mm-hmm. I'm happy because I can do something. I can play games for a living, which is great. Um but yeah. So okay, like um One of the things that we still have like some time left. So I'm kind of curious, like we've all kind of talked about like maybe things that like we would give advice to ourselves uh, in the past and things that maybe we would or would not do differently. Um, But what have been some of the most kind of like rewarding uh, experiences for you so far after making this challenge? Like, Justin, what about you since you just took a sip of water? (laughs) I blocked out a video. (laughs) Perfect time to ask him a question. (laughs) Most rewarding. Um, I think for me, the most rewarding thing was uh, being able to see my name in the credits of a game. I know like for some of the projects that we work on, it's not always being able to <laughs> be a big song. Uh, yeah, we're not always able to uh, talk about the games that we work on. Yeah. Sorry, uh, I jump in. For reference, of the 22 projects that I've worked on, three have come out and only two of them had credits. So like, <laughs> I 
Yeah, I've been there too. I've been there too. Less than a year. And... <laughs> <laughs> Jerry just like lost it. They're like threaded this man. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, it is cool to see like your hard work kind of being recognized and being mm-hmm. able to be like, yeah, I, I worked on that. Um, yeah, so I think that's probably my most memorable or most rewarding experience so far. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about you, Rebecca? Because you've been here. I for wish a my name was in it. Working on it. One that's not maybe. Why that on the job. <laughs> it would be nice to be able to talk about some of the things. Like, just like personally in my own head, I'm like, I'm working on one of my favorite games like this is great mm-hmm. like just mm-hmm. connecting with the projects that I get to work on mm-hmm. is just so rewarding mm-hmm. and also just like getting to know the teams mm-hmm. of the clients that we work with because like every project that I've been on I'm just like I'm so happy all the time I'm like yeah, it's so nice <laughs> like I expect them not to be but they like actually are just like mm-hmm. some of the most genuinely nice people and everyone has just taken all of our ideas and they like, you know what you're doing. Like, we're the experts mm-hmm. in this for a reason. And, like, they pay attention to us. And it just feels really valuable to be able to give that experience to other people and mm-hmm. help them build a game. Like, mm-hmm. it's just so rewarding. Yeah. That's sweet. Even if I don't have my name in the credits. <laughs> <laughs> in your heart. In your heart. In your heart. I'm like, heart. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Exactly. Yeah, so, I mean, I... A couple of people have mentioned this, but like, yeah, so like a lot of the work that we do, we can't really talk about um, either because it's not out there yet or sometimes like it is still like under contract. So like, how do you go about really talking about some of the skills that you develop when sometimes you can't uh, be like Hannah and Justin (laughs) and talk about the fun things that you're doing? Like, Adam, what about you? Like, how do you kind of approach that? Oh, you just have to bake. Name drop. We can go back to the door analogy. That keeps it super fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My mom won't understand what I'm talking about. That, so. <laughs> it is It is cool to be able to say, you know, that you are working on some really fun stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You just have to hope that people trust, you know. Mm-hmm, trust yeah. that the thing that you're working on is fun stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I think for like me, like there's been like I've had a really exciting, even though I can't, I'm not credited on the things that I'm doing. <laughs> but I did get to see some of the updates appear like in one of like the live service games. So, like that was really exciting. It was like, yeah, like, some of the tests that we did helped inform those decisions. So like that's for me, like that's also been kind of like a way that I've, you know, comforted myself. Like, <laughs> still, feeling, still feeling that sense of like accomplishment and then just being able to kind of, uh, tell the fact that like yeah like I have the skills to help make that actionable uh change even though I may not be able to tell all my friends and family (laughs) in the world (laughs) yeah I guess 22 of this role is like sometimes even when the game has come out like for example I I worked on Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War uh amazing team to work Mm -hmm. with um even now like we still can't talk about what exactly it was mm-hmm. that we touched on that game um, for various reasons. But instead, like, we can talk about our work very generically. Uh, mm-hmm. You keep it vague. Like, you just sort of get to be like, oh, yeah, you know, I've, I've had the opportunity to work on, like, a first-person shooter, and that was really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and everything else that you do is sort of, like, design process and implementation does i mean like it changes a lot but it also is kind of the same every time where you're like mm-hmm. oh my, like my day-to-day is uh we've got a client meeting and we're showing some cool designs to our mm-hmm. clients we're going to get some feedback from them and we'll probably make some changes or like we're going to get a final approval on a screen design and we're going to hand that over to the engineers like you can talk about that because it's got nothing to do with the clients that's just every day yeah mm-hmm. Yeah. I think uh, another really rewarding thing, minus the credits part, uh, <laughs> which is rewarding. Right, right. Okay. <laughs> um, but no, another really rewarding thing has been kind of seeing the synchrony that our team, our teams mm-hmm. have together. Mm-hmm. Um, so, for example, like uh, I was working with some of our designers in Brighton. We also have Sprung Studios Brighton, but uh, Brighton UK. Okay. Yeah, Brighton UK. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I was working with them, and we were talking through. Um, uh, the findings from a usability test. And mm-hmm. uh, as I was presenting those findings to the designers and the um, team at Rare, the designers were actively you know, taking notes and turning those findings into actionable design mm-hmm. uh, features that they were going to make changes to. They were going to like look into certain like 
button styles. They were going to look into like positions, things like that. And they were immediately turning those research findings into that. And it was really interesting to see because sometimes you kind of like put out, put out a research finding in, into the ether and hope that people are understanding of it. But uh, in this case, it was really, really helpful to actually see that full circle um, come through and uh, for the designers to really turn it into something real. And so that was really fun. Mm -hmm. Actually, Hannah, on that topic, like I think we've kind of touched on it a little bit about mm -hmm. some of the things that we like about working at Sprung is, you know, we get to work on games that maybe haven't been released yet or mm -hmm. there's like some kind of new update that they're working mm -hmm. on. Um, I'm curious, like Denny, like how would people get involved? Like if they wanted to maybe be a participant or be like involved in the user research, like how would they be able to play some of these games that maybe haven't been released yet or be going through some of the, the, yeah. the provide being able to provide their feedback. Yeah, that's like a really great question, Justin. So we actually do actively recruit participants who join our like subject pool. And what happens is that like we will actively have like different types of tests that come out for different types of games. And we have like this whole like built out database of people that are really interested in coming in to do like play tests with us, uh, being part of all the different sort of like methods that we like employ at Sprung and they can get directly involved by signing up to just join uh, our play tests, right? And like the nice thing is that, you know, you get paid to do it. Like when I was being part of like research studies, like as an undergrad, like I was getting nothing. <laughs> but if had I known I could get paid like up to $50 an hour just to come in and do something fun, like playing a video game, like I would have been all so um, I definitely recommend signing up to be part of our play test pool so that way you can come and do some like really fun games and then you can also get a chance to like see what it's like on the other side where you can not only give your feedback to help make these games like better <laughs> but you can also see what it's like to be kind of in this environment where you come in Eat behind the curtain yeah, yeah exactly and I think that's actually it's been kind of one of the things that I've really enjoyed the most is like now being on the other side just thinking about like all the different facets that go into mm -hmm. games um, mm -hmm. because like even though these are things that like you encounter as a player yourself like you may not kind of be really aware of like all the sort of like design iterations and decisions that go in when you're just looking at like even like a menu screen or like the fact that someone had to think about making like this reward really poppy and actually when you mm -hmm. got it so that way you felt really good and so these are things that like everyone in the studio has some sort of role in, but like you may not have consciously thought about that before you actually got involved. So mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I think kind of like last sort of like big question, I'm just gonna kind of like throw out there to our panel. Is there anything that you'd like to share with our audience that we just haven't touched on yet? Either like big life advice, kind of <laughs> our like, I don't know, like hot tape, Fun fact. <laughs> qualified to give life. <laughs> Best thing that's happened to you. <laughs> 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 career advice one, like I said before, always include a cover letter. I cannot stress this enough. <laughs> so are you saying we should include a cover letter? I think we should include a cover letter. Yeah, yeah. Um, but also, like, if, if you are looking to break into the games, the best thing that you can do is start making games. Mm. Um, and if you want to, like, be a game designer, start doing game design. If you want to be a, an engineer, start doing engineering for games. If you want to be a producer, it's a little harder, but, like, generally... Start making if, spreadsheets. Yeah. <laughs> start Get a team together. Start putting your own do portfolios, but, like, start <laughs> putting yourself in the position that you are managing other people and you're coordinating tasks. Mm. Um, game designs again, uh, game jams again, a great place to jump in and be like, hey, I just want to like help out and coordinate and make lists and stuff for a game jam team. Like, it's so much easier to recommend somebody for a job or see that they're a good fit for a job mm -hmm. if they are already doing the thing that is key to that role. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, I've been in the position of like looking at some resumes and stuff that have come in for roles at Sprung before. And always what I'm looking for is it's like not necessarily, oh, have you been working on games for like five years already? Mm -hmm. But um, are you just already proving that you've got the right mindset needed to coordinate people? Have you got the right mindset needed to collaborate? Like, 
uh, the I think that one absolute throughput for when you're building, making games um, commercially is that you are never working alone. You are always working with other people. You are always communicating with other people. Um, and so the more that you can demonstrate that you are great to work with and you're a great team player, then that you're miles ahead of your competition. I think just to add to that, um, a little bit of what I did during my job search process was coffee chats networking cold emails to random people which like is terrifying <laughs> it's a terrifying thing to do but re really realistically it helped me understand uh a little bit more about the role that i wanted to get it really helped me understand the moving pieces of uh creating video games it helped me understand how i'd be interfacing with designers with leadership teams mm -hmm. with producers with motion designers i think it really really is important to also have that understanding because when you're not in the industry you might not have a picture of like how all of these things are pieced yeah. together and i think that just talking to people 15 20 minutes here and there like i did a lot of like remote zoom calls and stuff mm -hmm. like that it really really helped like kind of open up my mind into like understanding what it is that actually goes into the role that I want to get and is that the right fit for me yeah I think that's like a really good point because like mm -hmm. I know for like myself personally like because I didn't intend on originally going into like the gaming industry and I had spent like too many years <laughs> doing my PhD so like one of the things that like, I really prioritize and trying to figure out like what is the role that's going to make me happy so spending time actually figuring out like what is the practical day-to-day -day look like for someone in this role can not only be beneficial for you as you're applying for a job because then you can start trying to piece together how you are going to sell that you are going to be good at that role but it might also help inform like whether or not you're going to like it mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah. So thank you all so much uh, for sharing your experiences. I just want to be kind of cognizant of time because I know Kristen has some updates and announcements on all the other stuff that's going on with the PIE. So thank you so much to all of our panelists. Um, thank you for all, everyone who has tuned in. And of course, thank you to um, everyone at the CIE who's helped organize this and given us an opportunity to chat. Um, as we've been talking a lot about like networking and building those connections, Please feel free to follow us all on LinkedIn, connect, reach out to us, join our play pass pool. <laughs> so you can also get part of our gaming experience. And yeah, we'd definitely love to hear and uh, chat with everyone else. But yeah, thanks so much, everyone. And yeah, pass it back over to you. Thank, you, Thank so you so much, Mark so Studios. Um, um, in about, in half, about an hour, half an hour, we will be doing the uh, League of Legends third place and final games on the CIE channels. So stay tuned for that. Thank you once again, Sprung Studios, and we'll see you in a bit. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye.